Want to know what fasting does to my blood sugar? This is interesting because this demonstration really illustrates the entire purpose of why I'm doing this channel, which is to reduce blood sugar spiking. And you can see here on the chart. Well, I like this guy actually. He in real life shows how blood sugar spikes to certain foods. But I want you to understand something. You are not him. So your body will spike to the same food totally differently. The stage of diabetes you are in, your activity level, your age, your gender, your insulin sensitivity, all will play a role. This is good that he's actually showing how bad food spikes the blood sugars and how when you're fasting your blood sugars are good, but I'll, I'll give you a, a quick tip here as well. This is me in a fasted state. I haven't eaten anything today. And you can see my blood sugar level remains very steady all the way across. And if you compare that to... Now, for example, here, he is saying that his blood sugar is st staying very steady. That means that actually he is pretty insulin sensitive. Because if you're insulin resistant, your blood sugar will start going up, especially if you're not active and you're fasting. So that happens. That's why I get a lot of comments. Hey, I'm fasting. I wake up and my blood sugar is high. I didn't eat anything for 10 hours. I slept for 10 hours. Why, why is my blood sugar is high? Because you're insulin resistant and your liver is constantly pushing that glucose. And if you don't have enough insulin in your system and if you're not very sensitive to that insulin, your blood sugar will continue to go up. And if you become insulin sensitive enough, eventually it will get better. To this down here, this is a day where I ate whatever I wanted. And when I say whatever I wanted, I mean a lot of sugary treats, bagels, I had actually McDonald's in here. Okay, so here is a interesting comment for you. He said he ate whatever he wanted. Well, the point is, you don't wanna feel like you're trapped in a diet cult. You want to eat what you want to eat and maintain your blood sugar. So you don't feel like you're banned from certain groups. That's why I don't believe in very strict diets. So, because at the end of the day, in the back of your head, you're saying that I want to eat that bagel. I want to eat that donut. That mentality has to change. The way you look at the food has to change because eventually you are going to give in and gonna eat whatever you want and will not probably care that your blood sugar is spiking even with a CGM. And what's happening here when I eat those highly processed sugary foods, you can see the peaks and valleys. My blood sugar is going up Insulin is secreted and pushes that blood sugar down and the process repeats itself over and over again. Every now he's lucky. He says that insulin goes up and pushes the blood sugar down. A lot of people are not that lucky. Their body is not gonna make that insulin and is not gonna push it down. So that's why we tell people you have to control those spikes. So a lot of people want to control their fasting and they don't realize that there are spikes. A lot of people will spike and they will never come down because they don't make enough insulin or they are very insulin resistant. Every time I eat that junk food, and what happens over time is that insulin keeps jacking up and up and up and up all the time. Your cells don't respond to it the way they used to. Over time, it's like hearing loss. If you're listening to loud, loud music with headphones, over time, you damage your ears and you need more volume to get the same effect. This is well, that is true in a sense. Uh, however, the insulin spikes are not the cause for the insulin resistance to develop. So that's where I think a physician hat comes in and I'll explain to you the true nature of insulin resistance. So yes, it is true that if you eat junk food or bad food and you're sedentary, your blood sugar will spike, your insulin levels will go up. But eventually what that does, insulin will pack the glucose into your fat cells and then it's gonna be packed into your pancreas, into your liver, and that creates inflammatory cytokines. So your pancreas will become less functional because of that gunk up with the fat cells and inflammation around the cells. So they're gonna become less functional. That's why we can reverse diabetes because we can clean up that fat in and around the pancreas and liver, and then those insulin cells will become functional again. For example, if you're a fit person, you're athletic, and you are eating 100 grams of carbs at a time, Will your insulin spike? Yes, it has to spike because it has to bring the sugar down. Although it's not gonna spike as much to his point, if you're obese and you're sedentary and you're eating 100 grams of carbs and you have a baseline insulin resistance, yes, you will need more insulin to take care of the job. But insulin spike in itself is not deafening your cells. It is the constant amount of high insulin that your pancreas has to produce is the reason for insulin resistance and diabetes and eventually the pancreatic beta cells slowly losing its function is the main cause of diabetes. 
Otherwise, you have millions and millions of beta cells that they can get the job done. It is over time, overuse, but also the inflammation built up in your body causing the problem. A good analogy for what's happening to your insulin levels, and this is what's known as insulin resistance. And it comes with a whole host of different side effects that you do not want. So this is a great illustration. So like I said, insulin resistance happens not because of the glucose spikes or insulin spikes. It is from the insulin causing fatty deposition and creating inflammation due to fatty acids in your system. So just to clarify, he has good intentions, he's a great guy, but, and maybe it is important to understand what he is saying because there is a point, but it's not the whole point. He's doing a great job, so it's a great guy, keep watching him.